Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. As I speak right now, all of Melbourne is out on the town except for us three, which is why there is not a single person watching us. Right, here we go, one person's joined us, there we go. It's feeling a bit left out there for a moment. Um, welcome everybody to the show from Facebook users and YouTube people as well. How exciting is that as we prepare or get ready for our big lockdown? Once again, I'm joined by my lads, uh, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, laddies? Excellent. Yeah, not bad. Not, good, not good. because I'm in Melbourne, but I'm in Ballarat, so I'm really happy about that. Very good. MPS, what were you going to say? I'm all good. Just yeah. all good. What can I say? Let's get into one of our uh, first topics of conversation for uh, this evening. While everybody's still here, I don't know why people are there instead of going out and enjoying the rest of their night while they still can. Hopefully next week, people who are stuck in their houses will come and join us, uh, which will be very, very cool. So, uh, Jeffro, apparently this is something you wanted to discuss and bring up, so I'm going to pass it over to you to have a bit of a chat, sir. So go for it. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think the weather's certainly helping us. It's too cold to go outside, so I think sort of uh, we're getting a few uh, people because it's just like, let's stay inside where it's nice and warm. So um, the subject of this one is twofold. It's like, what if your favourite film was actually never made as a film, but it was actually uh, done as a television show? And the opposite way is what if your favourite television show was never actually uh, financed as a TV show, but financed as a movie? So I'll look at the uh, the ones for the, uh, uh, the, the what if the film was a, uh, a television show and just pulling off one of my uh, favourite absolute movies, uh, as the uh, prime example for that one is The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai. So whenever you see the, uh, the film, it references so many different things that are uh, either happened in the past or likely to happen. And one of the key things is the passing nod to a supervillain called Hanai Shan. And they reference that and say, oh, well, we've um, got the comic books out and here's Hanai Shan and, and sort of uh, mention about Buckaroo uh, uh, fighting Hanoi Shen in the past. And this is a prime example where if the movie was ever a television series, you would finally get to see what they promised at the end credits. Uh, so we'd never got a sequel, but if they had made it into a television series, we would have finally got to have seen the adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai versus Hanoi Shen. So prime example of uh, uh, if that was a television show, that's where we would have gone and um, the fans would have been super excited to be able to sort of see what was promised and um, never happened. Uh, another one that uh, sprung to mind was the, uh, the 70s movie Logan's Run. So right at the very end, of course, as you know, they uh, are successful in escaping and they get outside into the real world and they see uh, an old man and then it's like, that's it, and you go, Hang on, where's, where's it leading to? Now, if that was a television show, and I know that they did do a, um, a TV show because I loved it and watched it um, as a kid, but uh, if they'd done that as a television show, we would have seen beyond that um, part. So we would have seen what it is like outside and all that. And there have been some uh, movies that have explored that angle where it's like they're inside a, a compound or whatever it is and they escape the compound and then they get out into the real world. So... Uh, but uh, Logan's Run, if that was a television series, that's the way it would have the further adventures of, of their uh, struggle and their escape. It's very interesting that you should mention that because with Logan's Run, um, and this happens in a lot of movies where they, they've been locked into this infrastructure and this society, and then they actually effectively destroy that society, right? And as you said, they've all escaped. They've all gone outside. And it's like, well, hang on. So how do they survive from now on? So all their food and all their environment, which has been like looking after them for so long, suddenly isn't there anymore. And is there, there's that old thing of sure, you know, fight, um, fend for yourself. But I mean, not all those people would know how to do that. And of course, you could argue that you're right, had it continued, there was a TV series for it and it continued on. A lot of those people would have struggled. They would have said, hang on, can we just go back to the way it was 
because it was actually quite good. It was comfortable. We looked after. Now we're out in the open air, and it's all great. And, of course, the nighttime will come, and it'll get dark and get cold and whatever else. And, uh, yeah, it's a very, very good point, actually, because it finishes on a happy ending. But what happens straight after the happy ending? So, uh, anyway, yeah. continue. And, and when you think about it, um, there was a movie called Mother that's on Netflix, and it's like the same principle where yes. it's like they get out into the real world. And the other uh, candidate, so, so to speak, is the Matrix because, I mean, effectively they're in um, the self-contained world and then they escape to the real world. So, it's, you know, it's same sort of principle, but Logan's run never sort of followed through. Uh, the other one that would be really good if it was ever a, um, a television series is uh, Black Panther for me because uh, at the end of the movie it's like they're basically saying, you know, we are Wakanda, you know, sort of we exist and all that. But... You, you wanted to sort of see what happened next. I mean, does the world sort of act like they did with the X-Men and sort of say, well, you guys are freaks and, you know, we deserve all your uh, resources and we're going to invade you and that? Or what happens to we accept them as uh, as friendly people and they help the world? So it's like it's it's got all the makings of something that would be a really good uh, uh, television series in terms of what happens with Wakanda sort of. Uh, so that's my... Uh, uh, the choice. The uh, next movie, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, uh, where basically you see Max sort of go off with the uh, the children and off into the, the desert and sort of into blue yonder. And it's like, ah, you know, sort of what happens next? So if they'd done a television series of Mad Max uh, Beyond Thunderdome, we could have seen a whole lot more of that storyline play out. So that... Um, that was another good example. My final example in this in this um, category is uh, Judge Dredd. I mean, they made so many fantastic stories in the comic book. To have it as just one single movie is such a shame. I mean, they could do easily two films. That's right. Uh, so they could quite easily do a television series and do all those stories. Um, for quickly... MPS, if you hadn't have said anything next week, you could have had the bone of contention. <laughs> it would have been an yeah. absolute You would go say, well, there's not one but two movies uh, for Michael and Colin uh, and ads. Uh, you're right, there was a TV series for Logan's Run, but it didn't address what happened when the entire society crashes right. and everybody escapes, at, like they did at the end of the movie. So it was only just a handful of people who escaped. So it's not necessarily the same thing. Uh, and just quickly, Colin mentioned about Star Wars. Uh, we'll probably bring up Star Wars in the if the show was a movie uh, at the end of the conversation because even though Star Wars has a TV series, just like Star Trek has a series of movies, uh, they're not covering the same storyline. And uh, I've got something very interesting to sort of bring up uh, regards uh, to that. But, uh, yeah, I agree with Jeffro. Stories that have the potential to really, really grow are just capped in that two-hour period. And you go, well, that's all well and good, but... And what happens next? So maybe that's an example where a sequel may have actually been quite handy. Anyway, Jeffrey, continue on. Yeah, so working on the opposite premise, what if a show, a television show, actually uh, was uh, made and self-contained as a movie? And for me, the first one I thought of was Altered Carbon because I can imagine that uh, as being a really fantastic movie. And when you actually watch the show, uh, it is very much like, uh, self-contained and it does finish up quite nicely. In fact, if you've ever seen the, the second season, it, it it just like it's almost like the reset the uh, storyline. So that I think would make a fantastic movie. I mean, it's a great television series, but if that was uh, never a, a thought on their mind to make a TV series out of it, it would have made a real great, fantastic movie. The other one I thought, um, and this might bring up a bit of discussion, is The Mandalorian. I could quite easily imagine that as a uh, movie-length um, production rather than a, uh, uh, a television series. I mean, it's great because it's episodic, so it does sort of follow, you know, sort of point A to point B to point C. And so if you were to uh, condense that down, that could have been the movie that we were really looking for uh, for those people that uh, Solo disappointed. Well, it's kind of uh, funny because, sorry, I'm just going to jump in because there, there were plans originally for a Boba Fett film, right? Um, mm -hmm. and then once they come up with the idea of Mandalorian as a series, because after Solo, they, I think they thought, you know, films, let's give them a bit of a break. And they, they weren't going to do both. Right? It's, it's well documented. They weren't going to do a Boba Fett film and a Mandalorian TV series, you know, with two characters that look roughly the same. So they ditched the film. Uh, and went with the series instead. And, of course, we all know how that's all panned out. Um, but, uh, yeah, it could have actually gone the opposite way. So there you go. But, uh, 
I, I would have I would have said that the Mandalorian would have made a better film than TV series because it would have been shorter, sweeter, and far more detailed. There was a lot of fluff there that we didn't really sort of need to see. Um, a lot of uh, firing around. Uh, but on the reverse of that, Solo, I reckon, should have been the series. Hmm. Yeah. You, know, you had far more adventures. You could have had Chewie. Chewie's already there, so you could have seen a lot more adventures, could have taken anything from the books um, and, and not stretched, you know, as many things as you could into one film just to get it sort of done. You could spread it out and, and you know, make it far more adventurous. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I never even thought of that, but I actually very much agree that that would have been a, a much better um, uh, concept to have Solo as a, uh, a limited run. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's it's done and dusted, but uh, no, I like that idea. Uh, the next one on the list is uh, the Orville because uh, essentially it could be almost like the, uh, uh, the unofficial sequel to Galaxy Quest in many ways. So... Uh, if Orville wasn't a television series, I could see them doing a, um, a Galaxy Quest type movie and being very successful. So that uh, I thought was on the list. Uh, the uh, the Watchmen, the uh, the mini series, uh, as we've seen, they've done them that in the cinemas and, and movies. So there wouldn't have been any reason why they couldn't have easily adapted that particular storyline for the Watchmen into a movie. So I think people would have gone and seen that. Uh, as well, but I mean, it was fantastic as a as, as a series. Now, uh, here's one for you, Dags. This is a show that you um, introduced to me, and I'm sure a few people would know. Uh, is the Lost Room? Mm -hmm. So it was fantastic as a um, uh, as a, a limited edition series, but it could have quite easily have worked very well as a uh, a movie because I could just imagine sort of because uh, it has a starting point and an end point. That that would be very successful as a um, as as a movie. So uh, that's uh, that's there. And um, the last examples I've got were uh, Dirt Gently. Uh, that's a television series that I didn't really enjoy all that much. But if they'd made it in a shorter version as a movie, I think it probably would have worked well. And the same thing with the two thousand and nine um, uh, mini mini series, The Prisoner. So. Uh, it wasn't really successful trying to imitate the television show from the 60s, but if they'd done something in a movie version and uh, kept it short and sweet, it might have been much more successful than what it was. So I think it's a very interesting sort of situation where um, some programs work well in the formats that they're chosen in. So, for example, uh, I was thought about this today, actually, like you got Star Trek. Star Trek primarily is a TV series, and, a, and like a lot of TV series is a very successful one. But if those series never existed and it was just the movies, motion picture, Wrath of Khan, da 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 da, da and not, nothing else, I don't think the franchise would have been anywhere near as successful as what it became. And the thing that I found is that the mindset to look at it is that if you have a film, Chances are people who watch it will watch it multiple times over their lifespan. You know, over maybe it might take 20 years and they might watch it multiple times. A TV series, for the most part, is only watched once. So because it can be so much of it. So you just wait for the next episode, the next episode, the next episode, and you just go on. And you may not you never go back and revisit it, especially if it lasts a long period of time. You may watch the odd episode here and there. But I don't know how many people would say, you know what? Oh, this show went for 10 years. I'm going to put in episode one right now and watch all 10 years worth over the next couple of months. I don't, again, repeating it. I don't know if that happens very often, but the um, benefit of a TV series, of course, is that you've got your story arcs are a lot longer and everything develops and moves and uh, integrates. You look at the start of the show and the end of the show and think, look at the journey that all these characters have gone on in a film that's condensed right down. But if a film is done properly, it can have huge amount of um, repeat entertainment because people are willing to watch it again. And that's what I think is, is quite different. And also, if you look at some TV series, if you get someone who says, oh, I've never seen Star Trek Deep Space Nine, what's all that about? And you go, well, there's seven seasons of it. There's a hundred and something other episodes. People may say, I can't be fag watching all that. It's just too much, right? It's, just, it's, just, it's, it's too long. Whereas with a movie, it was just a film. They just watch that and be done with it. So I think that's actually a very, very sort of um, key element uh, as well. So uh, there, who's going with Okay, yeah, Babylon 5. Some people actually do watch Babylon 5 multiple times, uh, Daniel, because it's only five seasons. But that's an example where the TV series is fantastic and some of the films are horrendous. So, MPS, you want to say something? Um, yeah, I'm actually going to go back to a point for Jeffro. You, 
you realize by the contention number two that there was a Watchmen film. No, he's well, not that. There's um yeah, there's actually technically not. two Watchmen films. Uh yeah. I thought you were talking about it as, as a TV show because I was going to say. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that um, as a TV show, that particular uh, oh, yeah. uh, part of the timeline could have quite easily been very successful as a, another one in the uh, the Watchmen uh, franchise uh, film series. Yeah. Mm. Because it's interesting how, like, we discussed this weeks ago about telemovies, the idea being that a TV series will either get episodes and cut them together to make a film uh, or they finish the series and then spin off and make the odd film here and there. I think you're referring to Alienation was a good example of that. I think f for the most part, when a TV series makes a film out of itself, even with the same cast and all the rest of it, I would argue that they're not necessarily as successful as if it was just the movie by itself, had all the hundreds of million dollars poured into it and they've made it as this cinematic masterpiece with a bit of luck, uh, as opposed to would actually do better than, say, as a TV series that at the end they go, let's make a couple of movies out of it. Now, there will be exceptions. There are always exceptions, okay? Um, but uh, I would almost argue that um, in most cases the the film version, if it was just done as a movie by itself, is actually more successful than a TV series would be, if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. what do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I, I think so. I think the only the only the only one I can think that might be sort of in the the medium of that is the Batman series from the sixties. You know, they had the first season, they did that, it was kind of successful. Then they did the movie because I think the the series was successful. Uh, and then they did season two, which was okay, and then season three dropped it all off. So if if Batman had been better uh, for seasons two and three, there may have been other Batman films. You know, not saying that the Batman film was great back then but it was sort of within the same feeling almost i mean you could ask a question how many people have seen the 66 batman film but never watched the tv series there you go yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's sort of part of the point of the whole thing so uh, i mean i would argue that x files as a tv series was way better than, than any of the films that they produced i mean they oh, may yeah. have had budgets but the series was outstanding and you get to the mm -hmm. movies and you go you know what kind of it might be bigger and it might be on a large screen and widescreen and whatever else and you go, you know, it kind of doesn't cut the mustard as much as the TV series did. Would you guys agree with that? I, I tend to agree, and I think another case in point was uh, Thunderbirds. I mean, the Thunderbirds movie, people will say the television series was way above the, uh, the, the, the movies, even though, you know, of course, the movies are on the big screen and the detail is all there. You know, the television show um, certainly edges out a bit like S-Files in terms of uh, popularity. Um, yeah, Ads, you're right. Uh, TV does give you a lot more scope to explore the stories and the characters, which they did with Stargate, which uh, um, uh, is a very good example of that. And there's a question for you, Jeff Farrow, from Colin about whether you think a TV series for The Terminator, not Sarah Connor Chronicles, how do you reckon that would have gone? I don't think people would have accepted it much. And uh, the reason why is that sometimes when a movie is so ingrained with certain actors, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a bit like uh, Robocop. I mean, I love the Robocop television series, but nobody's really going to take any attention to Robocop because it didn't have Peter Weller. It didn't have the hallmarks of the uh, the movie. So I think uh, a Terminator uh, television series wouldn't work because the strength is not in the, the robots, the Terminators themselves. It's in the characters, which um, people... People just look at it and go, well, that that person isn't uh, the right person. You know, they may look a little bit like Sarah Connor or they may look a bit like um, the Terminator, but they're not. So I can't see it working. I think that answers, um, that's, that's very similar to Colin's question earlier about, about whether Star Wars would have worked as a TV series. I don't think it would have. It was the stories were so neat and compacted that they fit within those two, the, the, like the original trilogy, like the, those two-hour windows, and they were neat and tidy and it all worked well. It had a starting point, had an ending point. Remember, TV series, for the most part, don't have end points. They just go on season after season, introduce a new threat, a new uh, adversary for a season, finish it off at the end of the season, then introduce another one and go on and go on from there. So for that reason, I think Star Wars worked well definitely as, uh, uh, as a film uh, series in many ways. That's why I thought the Star Trek films you know, compared to the TV series, including the Next Generation ones, just weren't as good. I mean, there were a couple of really good movies, but nothing compared to the TV series Next Gen, DS9, Voyager, uh, and so on um, as they went on. MPS, you want to say something? I was going to say, go back to the Terminator sort of thing, and I reckon if you 
modified the storyline and, you know, you took out the main actor, you know, not obviously Sarah Connor because, you know, you need to have her, but if you took out Arnie as the Terminator and you say, oh, he was out of commission and we're trying to build him or something, you could actually legitimately have him out, bring another guy in as a Terminator and you could continue on the story from that sort of thing where they've got to try and escape him while they're trying to fix this other one. And, and the storyline would sort of work, you know. I think it's, it all depends on how you sort of look at it. Because you know, the Sarah Connor Chronicles really didn't work for me. You know, you've got those. And then you bring in, like, the last movie, you've got, um, uh, what's her name from, from Game of Thrones playing Sarah Connor. Amelia and Clark. Yeah, Amelia Clark. And you got, uh, that didn't work for me either. You know, she's a great actor. Don't get me wrong. I love her work in other films. But she was certainly not the right casting for for that film. So... Well, as it turned out, she didn't enjoy it anyway. I was glad there were no more sequels. Um, Ads mentioned about Firefly. Sorry, Jeff, I'll get to you in a sec. Ads mentioned about Firefly. When you think of Firefly and you've got Serenity the movie, which is the one that people mostly focus on? And I'm willing to bet most of them focus on the TV series. Yeah. Not so much. It's almost yeah. like, well, the movie was great, but it doesn't compare to the series. It's kind of funny how that, and it was a short series too. So you could argue that, you can just bypass the film altogether and just watch the series. And if you do that, then, of course, you don't know anything about the history of the Reavers and you end up with this mystery of who they are. So um, that's a very interesting sort of uh, one to sort of think about. Jeff, are you going to say something? Yeah, I was just wondering what you guys thought of the uh, the news that's been going around for quite some time that they're going to make a uh, television series out of uh, Diego Luna's character from Rogue One. So how would that go in your eyes? Do you think it would work? Do you think sort of it's a bad idea? I personally, I'm going to just jump in first thing. It's brilliant. Cassian Andor was a character from Rogue One who was absolutely just sold the film, made it really, really work. And what made it work was the fact that he was a guy working for the Rebel Alliance who freely admitted that he had done bad stuff in the name of the good guys. And uh, if they're going to do a series about him, and it is actually Diego Luna, the actor, who's going to be playing Cassian. Mm. Um, I think of all the series that they're producing, Mandalorian, Kenobi and Cassian. Cassian is the one that has the potential to be a real winner, providing they don't water it down and make it too family friendly. If they're prepared to, prepared to stick it on, because it is during wartime, you know, the period of civil war, if they're prepared to make it serious and adult, you know, adult to a point, it has the potential of being absolutely fantastic, providing they also don't change his character as well. They keep him the dark, brooding guy that they had in Rogue One and they don't make him suddenly this happy, joyful sort of dude. Uh, I think that has that has winner written all over it. And uh, yeah, it, as a limited series, I think it'd be uh, awesome. Sorry, MPS, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'd say it should be a limited series, but I don't think it's going to be the same. I think they're going to do exactly what you said. They're going to water it all down. Um, I think there are far more other characters that should be doing series that you can actually go for longer periods. You're sort of limited with, with some of these human type characters. You know, if you did a series about Chewie, you could go on well and truly past uh, Last Jedi and, and Force Awakens and all that sort of stuff and see, because, you know, Wookiees are 200 years old, you can always go before Han when they meet. You know? And the same with Yoda. Yoda's 900 years old when he dies. You've got 900 years worth of stuff, you know, and as they say, Maz Kanata sort of mixes in with him every so often. She's a 1,000. So, you know, these are far... You can have any characters. You can put them in any time period. You know, you don't have to be... Don't have to talk about all the new stuff that they've done. You know, you can start Yoda off at, at being maybe not like a child because I think that's sort of showing us what Yoda species is like at that young age of 50. Um, but if you start him off at, say, 200 when he's a Jedi, maybe not a Jedi master, but a Jedi, and then you can see why and how the Jedi and all that have developed over 700 years, I think that would be a far more interesting series. Jeff, I think that... Yeah, I think that uh, uh, having a, a, a Chewbacca uh, expanded storyline is really good because I do want to see a sequel to the holiday special, you know. Uh, let's let's bring on that life day and, and, and bring Chewbacca back. We need more. All right. I've got a question from Aaron. This is for you, Jeffro. Um, so lots of forgotten TV shows for movies because their TV actors aren't as charismatic, charismatic as it's in movies. I'm not a... Bill and Ted's kind of guy or first be anything you want to comment on regarding that? Well, I mean, a lot of the, um, the, the stuff, it, it was diluted because they made um, uh, cartoon versions of the, uh, of these, these, these great movies. So in, in many ways, sort of, uh, it was hard to really take seriously, but there wasn't all that many um, live action versions, TV ones of, of movies. So, 
they're really sort of hard to uh, to, to think of. But uh, I guess what with the budgets being what they are, and you know, and you're watching something, and then you can see that there's going to be a commercial break, and then you sort of have to wait three minutes and watch the uh, the next part of it and all that. I think television does sort of dilute the impact of your enjoyment of these things. And um, I think uh, MPS said that, uh, you know, you, oh, actually, no, it was you, Dags, that you, you watch something on TV and then you move on. So you're not likely to revisit it again. Yeah. All right. We're about to wrap up this uh, conversation. Uh, I like uh, to answer Dan, uh, Colin's question. Am I looking forward to the June remake? No, I'm not looking forward to it. It's like not negatively. I just don't really not interested and I don't know why they're making it, but it is what it is. And this is definitely one of the best lines of the night. There we go. Yoda and Neattle, the college is, uh, that would make an excellent TV series. So well done to Aaron for that one. All right. We're going to move on. It's a conversation we could, oh, sorry, MPS, you want to say something? No, that's all right. You want to move on? That's fine. I was just going to add a couple of films that I thought could make interesting TV series. Oh, very quickly, if you want to just chuck them in. Uh, Total Recall. Yep. I think it could be an interesting Actually, they series. made a TV series of that. Fair income. Oh, they did. Fair that. Income. <laughs> um, District 9, I think, would be uh, mm. something you could see. Yeah. The other district. Uh, Looper. Um, that was the Bruce Willis and I can't remember what the other guy's just name was. Thank you. Uh, and I think Avatar would be a better TV series than film series. Okay. Mm. Very good. So we've had a couple of really good bones of contention tonight. It's been actually quite good. I wasn't quick enough to get my thing going, but uh, I love it. Very good. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, we have, you know, films, TV shows. At least they both exist in some format for whatever people like to see and uh, good on them too so excellent um all right so we're going to wrap up now it's just gone uh, sort of just after 9 30 we've still got like two and a half hours before we're, uh like the cell the walls go up um mps any final words you want to mention uh no nothing from this side of things but um six weeks will go quick guys and girls yeah yeah and if you get stuck just come back in next week and uh, join us and uh, just oh my god i can't handle anymore jeffro any final words mate no, not much. Um, stay safe, um, do the right thing, and um, we look forward to seeing all you guys uh, next week on the uh, the show. Very good. So there you go. Put the word out for anybody who's out there looking for someone or some people to talk to. Uh, so come and join us next Wednesday at 8 o'clock, okay? So all you guys watching this now know about us, but we need to spread the word to others out there who desperately need a bit of nerdy talk. What can I say? And with that in mind, make sure you all... <gasps> Don't forget to check the YouTube channel. Stay nerdy. Okay. All right. See ya. See ya.